look at him. You don't know how. Check him out. ready for launch. Walker needs a 48.1 first place. Oh, brother. Oh, between his legs. How about it? Woo! Oh, my. That's, that's the cherry on the Sunday. Here comes Sabalos. Yes! Look at the air. Look at the hang time. Look at the flying motion. All right, here is Vince Connor with his first jump. was a collection Man, for the ages right there. Oh, my God. Look who's with us. Dr. J.G. We got a, as they say, we got a doctor in the house. There's a doctor oh, yeah. in the house. Here, front and center. You know, one of my favorite <laughs> movies is The Right Stuff, man. They ask the, the pilot in there, say, who's the best pilot you ever saw? He says, you're looking at him. Who's the best dunker you ever saw? The best dunker. Ah, oh, man. Am I looking so at him? so many guys <laughs> that you might be looking at. Yeah. <laughs> That's an amazing uh, thing. I mean, uh, what stands out in your mind, Dr. J? Well, when I was watching the uh, clips, I was actually thinking about all the various announcers who have had that job of describing <laughs> it. And I think Kenny goes to the head of the class. Oh, oh yeah. It's, it's over. over. Go home. Let's go home. <laughs> it's it's over. It's closed. <laughs> hey, you know, you, you know what's ironic about Doc being here? Out of all the slam dunks, I should think the old ABA stuff, Y'all slammed up contest back in the day. The original. It's, it's, it's the original. It was the best one I've ever seen. You know, Charles, I thank you because that is the absolute best segue we could possibly have into our footage from that very era. Let's go back to 1976. Okay. Let's relive this, ladies and you. gentlemen. Roll it. <laughs> First, from the San Antonio Spurs, Mr. K, Larry Keenan. Also from San Antonio, George Gervin, the most dominating figure in the ABA, Artis Gilmore. At six foot six, the fabulous Dr. J, Julius Gervin. In his rookie season, the Denver Nuggets, David Thompson. So here we go with uh, with artist Gilmore first, and uh, I don't know, you Doc. Want to talk through it. Yeah, let's do this. Actually, no, actually, 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 that should be on Kenneth Lister and other night. <laughs> George Iceman they, Gervin. The way this was set up, they had requirements, so you had to do one from the left, one from the right, one from outside of a dotted area right there below the, the dotted line. There's right. a piece of tape there, so you're supposed to dunk once from out of there, and then you had a free dunk. So so it was a little bit more restricted than what you have now. You, Got to follow the guidelines, so everybody's trying to do that. Now, how, how to be good boys. Now, you think about this, all of these dunks right now, like, most of the guys now have an opportunity to watch other people do dunks. You guys are kind of laying a blueprint. How difficult it was because of that? I think what you try to do is, you know, you do things that you see in the practices, and uh, obviously you see done out on the playground. And uh, then as you advance through the rounds, 
you know, it's like, okay, I don't want to do the same thing over and over. Kind of like what Larry Nance did when he beat me that night. He was doing that, you know, rocking the cradle from left, right, front, all over. And uh, we were trying to do something different so it would be new and fresh and you'd have the chance of having that impact on the audience, spiking one and bringing them to their feet. But I can't believe, like, you have ever seen those dunks before. Like, I, now, Vince Carter could say, you know what? I'm going to rock the cradle, but now I'm going to do it with two hands or I might rock the cradle and try the 360. You invented the rock the cradle. So well, I'm it's, saying it's called variations of the same theme, mm -hmm. you know, and, uh, and, and there is a common thread. You have to get the ball above your head and above the rim, and you got to bring it down into the hole. Now, sometimes when guys have bigger hands like I did, then I could move it around a little bit. A guy Can I with get a small hands. Right a here? Guy, I got small hands. Yeah, a guy with I got small hands. <laughs> well, like you. Oh, like you don't care. Brains are like that too, Kenny. <laughs> <laughs> but a guy like David Thompson, I mean, that's what made him so exceptional. He couldn't even palm the ball. He had hands like you. Maybe it would be a North Carolina thing, right? <laughs> <laughs> or a state. But uh, he would elevate, and the ball would just sit on his hand, and he's coming at you. And you know he can't really move it, but so much, because he can't even palm the ball, and he'd still find a way throw it down in the in the hole it was just like a human jet what's easier to do <laughs> jet. yeah I, I, that didn't go right past me. Okay. what's easier to do dunk in a game in the in the heat of action where you have to make it up as you go or to think about this and do it i think the game the game situation uh you know good defense uh awareness of um you know your own personal capability uh, and plus, you know, somebody trying to challenge you makes you do things that you can never do out here. That's why the mascots look so much better than the players. You know, the mascots <laughs> started taking this thing over because, you know, they had props and trampolines and rehearsal and whatever. And a lot of the, the pressure that you see on players now is because they don't have anybody pushing them. They have to get to that level themselves. And then you find that one guy can do it on that given night and he becomes the winner. Now that we've got you here, can we get you to stay for another segment or so? Uncle. Because David Thompson is also going to join us. Okay. Sky, well, we're going to be just... There are going to be some Dunkin' Fools on this set. I like it. And I'm not one of them. I was about to say. Yeah, yeah, I, I can touch the net, <laughs> or I could a few years Duncan ago. Fools. <laughs> uh, is that what you mean by that? <laughs> we'll be back with more in a little while. I mean, Michael Jordan and Dominique Wilkins. How about the showdowns those guys had? We'll be back as they warm up at, uh, on the floor at the MCI Center. Uh, they're getting ready for two ball. America Online two ball. Alan Houston getting loose. He's also going to be in the... Uh, 1-800-CALL-ATT shootout later tonight. It's All-Star Saturday on TNT. Center in our nation's capital. It's All-Star Saturday 2001. Don't forget to vote. Make your predictions for America Online 2-Ball, 1-800-CALL-ATT shootout, and the NBA.com slam dunk presented by Real. Cast your vote online at www.nba.com or on America Online keyword NBA. Dot com. And we welcome you back here to the uh, MCI Center. We got the boat is full It's getting now. better, I mean, though, baby. Oh, I mean, I, I can obviously say now that there is one person seated here who has never dunked. Kenny? No, <laughs> and it's not <laughs> you either. <laughs> and there's video proof of everybody here except me as David Thompson joins us now. Thanks a lot for being here. Uh, it's good to be here. Always to see my man, Dr. J, and the rest of the fellas, Barkley. We, we have been looking at some vintage footage of uh, slam dunk contests from the past, even going back to the ABA 76, you and Doc going head to head. What were your memories of those showdowns, uh, that one in particular? Well, I, I was very excited uh, going up against Dr. J. I haven't seen him from NC State when he played in the ABA. And, uh, you know, being a rookie, going up against somebody like Dr. J, I was very excited. Uh, I did some of my best dunks. I did a 360 and did a, a windmill and then uh, went, went up to the rim and down to my knees, did a nice dunk, and I, I thought I was going to win it until I saw Dr. J <laughs> <laughs> take off from the free throw line with his fro blowing in the wind. <laughs> it was all part of the effect. Right. You know, what? You I know what? I remember growing up because watching all those dunk contests, but we talked, you talked about Tom Chambers being in Phoenix in a city nobody got to see him, but back in those days, Denver. People didn't see Denver on television a, a lot. And even Michael Jordan says he tried to pattern a lot of things after David Thompson being in North Carolina and at North Carolina State. And I remember that one pitch in Sports Illustrated when you're blocking the shot and, you, and, and then you're like 20 feet over the rim <laughs> at six foot four, one of the best that ever did it. So how did you, how do you develop that technique? And I think we've talked about this before. I know there's a certain degree of talent, but how do you did you strengthen? We talked to Nick. 
Uh, did you strengthen your legs in a certain way? Were there things you did to improve your jumping ability, or can some guys just get up and some guys can't? Well, I think uh, a little bit of both. You know, when I was young, I did a lot of weightlifting as far as uh, uh, half squats, and uh, I wore ankle weights back then. That was the thing. Uh, but, uh, you know, uh, I worked on dunking at a young age, and when I was five foot eight in the eighth grade, I could first dunk a ball. So. <laughs> <laughs> A real, a real ball. Was the first, was the first <laughs> and he, and he still Doc. couldn't palm the yeah. ball. Now, that, that's even more When's amazing. When's the first time you dunked? Uh, I was in elementary school, but I was on an eight-foot basket. Uh -huh. you know, well, so I, I, I grew up in Long foot, Island. So we, I, the elementary school, I went to, we had an eight-foot basket. Then we progressed to a nine-foot basket. And by the time I got to a ten-foot basket, when I was in about eighth or ninth grade, I mean, I had already perfected a lot of different ways to throw it down because I started, you know, on a lower rim. Right. Uh, wow. <laughs> now, now, tonight, you're going to judge. David, you're going to yeah. judge, right? Right. Kenny, I know you're a judge. No question. I'm not a judge. Charles, could you could you convince Charles to judge? And no, I'm well, you know, I am staying upstairs tonight. This is for the great players who played the game to be judges and these young guys. I'm an old player who's coming toward Dr. J's and David's age. I'm going to let you just say this. When I was at the All-Star game, I thought it was for two, pe it was for two people. The older guys who made it possible and the guys who were in the game. I used to hate when them old ex-players <laughs> who were still in the league or weren't any good were walking around like they owned the place. The league is, <laughs> this is a celebration for the old guys who made it possible for us today and for the guys who are here today. And I'm not going to be one of those guys I used to hate. I'm going to sit right up here and watch and enjoy myself. Because I think yeah. I've seen, I think I've seen every slam dunk. Uh, in the last 20 years, and I and I can't wait for it. And and I, I we, know I know Charles very well because I, I broke him in as a rookie. We had two seasons together, and yeah. I'm listening to this, and I'm thinking about is this the same guy? You know, <laughs> who, who back in Philly in 1984, you know, was saying yes sir, no yeah. sir to everything. Oh, and and you oh, know, Charles no, has oh, always really? been a little bit of a politician, and the only reason he's not judging this contest is because he's thinking about coming back, and he knows if he messes up the slam dunk contest. These guys are going to be mad at him. So this is all a ploy to just kind of keep on the down low to come back. Yeah, be straight with me now. Did you give him the rookie treatment? Oh, yeah, he had to carry balls. Bags, balls. balls, bags, I everything. I had to take him a USA Today. I had to take him a USA Today. I had to carry Andrew Tony with coffee at like 11 o'clock. He had coffee before he went to bed. They used to kill me. But let me tell you something. Every young guy in this league, to come into a league with veterans like Doc, Moses, Maurice Cheek, Andrew Tony, Bobby Jones, Clement Johnson, and Clint Richardson. I don't want to leave anybody out. I mean, they taught me the ropes. And these young guys, instead of learning from other young guys who are nuts, would come out better if they got some veterans like these guys. Let's move on to some more classic dunk stuff. Jordan and Dominique Wilkins had some memorable high-scoring evenings in their head-to-head -head duels when the Hawks and the Bulls got together. And when it came to the slam dunk, well... It doesn't get much better than this. This is the championship. Dominique Wilkins and Michael Jordan. From high above the rim and the perfect score of 50 on that dunk from Dominique Wilkins. We were just competitors in, in, the, in the field of creativity, and a lot of times that was uh, shown on the basketball court. And, and, and in this instance, it was in a dunking arena, and, and we had our own little stage to showcase. The thing for me is just to hear the battle. Uh, it, was, uh, it was incredible. It was incredible. Going against Mike, I mean, if you can't get up and go against him, who can you get up to go against? And Ed, he brought out the best in me. That one exploded at the bottom of the net. His second 50. Incredible. You know, as a competitor, you always 
think that you've done enough to win. And I, I thought I'd done enough to win it. Uh, I thought my last dunk was my best one, and two previous ones I got a 50. <laughs> Hey, Nick, uh, you know, you probably could have won, but hey, we're going to tell you, you're in Chicago. <laughs> a lot of people felt that was a home court advantage in, in, in me winning, um, which I don't disagree with. You know, when you're at home, you're supposed to win. There was certainly a, a difference of opinion on that night in Chicago when Michael Jordan won in front of the home folks over Dominique Wilkins. You were there. I, I was there, and uh, it, it was a controversial finish. And uh, the fact that we went in Chicago, which was Michael's hometown, I think it, it swayed uh, things in, in his direction. There was one dunk in there when, uh, when Steve uh, talked about uh, Dominique, you know, throwing it down and it spiking the bottom of the rim. And actually, when you look on the replay, it was a little bit more of a rub in. And I think he got a 50 on that one. And it should have been the one that was in the 40s, maybe middle 40s or high 40s. And then he did a more spectacular dunk a little later. And I think he got penalized because they started thinking about what had happened before. You know, Dominic Wilkins says that these days, he's working with the Atlanta Hawks, by the way, and, and that he, you know, folks will bet him, can he still get up and dunk? And people in the office, and he's, you know, he's taken, I guess, a little bit of change. Can you guys still dunk? You still well, dunk, well, well, David, I you can still, still dunk? dunk, so I know Dominique yeah. can still dunk because he's a lot of years younger than me. He has to be See, different his bet. Even as fat as I am, I can still dunk. I can't do anything else. There's a lot of other stuff go on out there besides dunking. It's, it's, it's not something that you forget how to do. It's just something you cease to do Yeah, at but some you, point in time. And, and David, you still? <laughs> yeah, it hurts a little bit more, but I, <laughs> I can I, still get up. It's about the bit. landing. You know now, what? Right? Right. I'd love to feel that pain just once in my life. No, no, that's the Ernie. He's right. Ernie, can you get, still getting up that? to dunk is pretty easy. It's when you come down and they send that shock waves through your knees <laughs> and, and your back. That's where it hurts. Yeah, what, I, I can still get up and touch that. Yeah, what yeah. would Dominique say? Dunking's not the problem. Running to dunk. <laughs> <laughs> That's the problem. <laughs> when we come back, more of Dominique Wilkins, this time against the little guy, Spud Webb. It was a classic in 1986. We'll be back. Oh, imagine them playing that song. I've never heard that one, huh? I've been taken completely <laughs> off guard. We're back here at the MCI Center, and we're getting ready for uh, you know what, Ernie? Online two ball. You yes, know, what, Charles? Speaking of that, I think we should get them Baja men and kill them, because I am so <laughs> sick of that song. <laughs> Good family entertainment here on TNT tonight, and uh, I'm not going to kill him on the air. I'm going to do it privately. <laughs> you just take matters into your own hands, Chuck. Uh, let's continue with our retrospective on the slam dunk and look at '86. Neek and Spud. The Atlanta Hawks standing five foot seven. Spud Webb, of course, the emotional hometown favorite. Five foot seven is Spud Webb. He will really turn the crowd on, but I don't think he's a, a, a contestant to win this thing. All right. Speaking of who you think might be able to win, I have my favorite. I think Dominique Wilkins is going to win this thing. Just move on. That is out of sight. Again, the flair, the creativity, and the power. 47, I'm surprised. This is it. The moment everyone's been waiting for. Now what do you think of his chances? Well, I think they've improved greatly. <laughs> move that was rather impressive yeah, also heck of a dunk Woo! and Spud Woo! 
Webb comes through the clutch to put the pressure on Dominique. I think Spud had a, had a fool going into that slam dunk contest because he did some things that we didn't even know he could do. I mean, the 360s off the glass, the bounce and catching off the backboard, and all, that stuff was incredible. Do or die right here. I don't think so, John. That was impressive, but I don't think that was 50. 48, and our new slam dunk champion was an incredible upset. I was at home and I had the crowd behind me. But, you know, he's a great person and, uh, you know, it's great to have him with me uh, in the championship. We're both of us on the same team. Some of the stuff he was doing, it was beyond belief. I mean, you're never going to see a little guy do that kind of stuff again. Never. There you had a couple of Atlanta Hawk teammates, and Dominique had no idea what Spud had in store for him that <laughs> night. Spud was let, letting nothing on. Charles, you watch Dominique dunk, and you're thinking about... I, I compared it to Mr. Thompson because, as Dr. J had said it earlier, it is, it is very difficult to do dunk when you can't palm a ball. Michael and Dr. J are the two, they, man, their hands are incredible. I think that obviously helped them a lot in, in dunking. But Dominique and David, they just could jump out the building. It, it was different, too, because they were two-foot jumpers, more of like the straight up. Dr. J and Michael are straight up, but they move out as well. Yeah, that's because the that's called they can palm the ball. Thing. No, exactly. it's different illusions. Just different <laughs> yeah. illusions. Because you can palm a ball one hand, it makes it a lot e uh, not not easier, but it gives you more control. But if David and Dominique, they just could jump. They had what we call up. Yeah. D tell me about the creativity and the flair and the, and trying to win in the crowd over that you have to have in that, David. Well, that plays a big part. Uh, the the crowd response and. Uh, you know, when you get the crowd going, it kind of pop, pumps you up as well. Uh, I think uh, when, when Julius did his dunk, what he did was he paced his steps off, and that kind of got the crowd going. And then uh, That was fake right away. I mean, that was all illusion, too. <laughs> nah, man, it was 72 steps. Oh, <laughs> steps. <laughs> hey, blatant I got it down pat. I got a patent on that. 72 <laughs> steps. Hey, how big are your hands again? No let traveling. Let me right? see this. <laughs> there there left. We wearing this one out. That's why I can't dunk. Hey, Doc, let me ask That's you. That's what I can't dunk. I want to ask you this question. <laughs> I said it earlier before you got here. Well, you, you know, everybody talk about the role model things and everything. High cognizant, that's a big word. Whoa, Charlie. Were you growing up that every kid want to be you? I, I think about midway through the whole process, I, I realized that, you know, when kids' parents would come up and say, I want my son to be like uh -huh. you when he grows up. And they were not all, you know, just like me. <laughs> so it crossed over, and, and it had that effect. And, and when I watched basketball growing up, and I watched, you know, Baylor and, and Rick Barry and Clyde Frazier, and, you know, the, the guys who were the legends of the game, uh, you know, I watched their conduct as well as their talent, and it really inspired me. Let's, let's move on to, uh, to another slam dunk. Contest. This was really a kind of a tribute to marketing, as a matter of fact. When Dee Brown was crowned the champion as a new line of shoes came out. Let's pump this one up. Take a look. To the highlight of the evening, the slam dunk competition. I like Sean Kemp because I think he has a, a blend of the power, finesse, and the speed. But I think the guy who's really going to excite this competition is Dee Brown. One of the innovations this year, I think, is an incredibly good panel of judges. Well, you remember what they said? They said they want hang time. They want style. They want the creativity part. But a little flair. See, this guy is going to go in all different directions before he dunks his basketball. 47.6. Here's Dee Brown. Oh, he's pumping his shoes up. Oh, got... there you go. <laughs> there's first of all, he's got the favorite right there. He's pumping up his shoes. favorite. 48.2. Here comes Dee Brown. 44.2. Moving into the semifinals of the slam dunk competition. 48.3. What's Dee Brown going to come with this time?
pressure right here. Yeah, pressure on Tim. The lob, the bounce, the windmill jam. 47.3. So to advance, Steve Brown will have to have a cumulative score of better than 44.5. Oh, a 48-4. Brown and Kemp going into the final. 44.3. D. Brown is resting the ball on the backboard. <laughs> there you go. You got him. 48.1. Kemp has moved about 95 feet away. And he gets a 48. 46.4. 45.7. Steve Brown has already got 46-4 and 48-1. He's actually already the winner. Steve oh. Brown about to put the icing on the cake. Oh, my. That's, that's the cherry on the Sunday. The no-look dunk. Steve Brown wins the slam dunk championship. Charles has his hand Hey, his you know what? In the immortal words of one of my heroes, Malcolm X, Sean Kitt was bamboozled, hoodwinked, led astray. <laughs> He got robbed. But he did his best dunks, though, in the first two rounds. Yeah, and he then did. In that he, fast, he ended up missing round. in the finals. Exactly. So they, they just showed the makes, but I think he missed two exactly. dunks okay, in the final okay, round. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm wrong. But see, like, David, does it ever get... Does it ever become a problem just to think of something new to do and something that people aren't just going to... Okay, ho hum, I've seen it before. Yeah, I think that's been a problem in the past. Uh, everybody was doing the same dunks that people were doing years ago. But uh, I think last year, Vince Carter came up with something a little bit different. <laughs> I'll say. And uh, I think... That made, brought a lot of excitement to the slam dunk. You know, I talked to Vince after, after the slam dunk, slam dunk contest. I was in the back, and he came by me. He, he leaned over. He said, I did two dunks today that I had never done before. Oh, wow. I mean, so those were things that just came out of him in the heat of the competition. We've seen a lot of uh, great dunks here in the past oh, 40 minutes or so, but Kenny has kind of compiled his, I guess, list of worst dunks, worst no, performances. Not, no. I don't want to hate on guys, but last well, year... Well, you I mean, did the other night when I, we no, ran it. but last year I did the top ten dunks. But then we had some dunks... This this call, don't, mean, hey, don't measure hey, 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 you This mean, one right so here. Call them skunks. <laughs> this one right here. Call them skunks, he not can dunks. See, I do not believe that Cedric Sabalas could not see out of this. I am not what you say, Barry. Pretty strong accusation. I'm not fooled. Look, after the dunk, Doc, he's, ho he's holding on to the pole. How did he know where the pole was? He could see <laughs> through the blindfold. <laughs> You're oh, killing my he's, teammates. He's, man. He's, on, he's, on a, he's on a basketball court, and they all have poles right there in that same position. Hey, Tim, <laughs> Perry, Tim Perry was the most unenthusiastic dunker in the whole competition. <laughs> I've never seen it. And this guy fooled me. I, thought, I, I had him picked him coming he second did. or third. That and here man. he is. He comes up. He's doing a dunk that I kind of used to do in the dunk contest. I'm like really hyped. But here it is. Strike one. <laughs> Throws the ball and misses. Here he gets strike two. Doesn't come over again. This is baseball, ladies and gentlemen. You tone out the game. Strike three. Next contestant. Get on out. It's his own teammate. No boys. Everybody's <laughs> laughing at him. And he can say, Trade him. He's the trade him. Trade him. <laughs> and, and here's another one. Mahmoud Abdul Rayo. He's he's a great shooter, great person. But he should not have been in it, David. You're yeah. right. And you know what's he didn't weird? Make one dunk. He, he hadn't make... changed his name yet. No, exactly. he, was still, he was still Chris Jackson. Still Chris Jackson. He hadn't made a dunk in the whole dunk contest. Do not get in it. He froze when the cameras came on because in practice he was making all of these dunks. And then the worst of all, he's in the <laughs> He's Watch out to leave money alone. But look, no, look what he does in the dunk contest. He comes in and takes the layup. <laughs> he takes the layup in the dunk contest, Doc. You cannot do that and be in the dunk contest. Those were some skunks. Those weren't dunks. <laughs> no, no but see, that's why they shouldn't let all the midgets in the dunk contest. Hey, did Daryl Armstrong come to you before that and say, hey, what should I do? I wasn't in Daryl Armstrong's <laughs> life at that time. <laughs> I'm in his life now, and he's my man. But I wasn't in his life at that. Actually, I was working for NBC. Okay. And I witnessed that in contest. A, in a in prior it. life. Have, have, have players come to you and said, hey, give me an idea? Uh, not that I can remember. All right. Doc, thank you so much. You. It's been a pleasure seeing right. you. David thank Thompson, you. thank you very much. Solid guy. A lot of handshakes. Let them know the door is open. <laughs> the door is open. <laughs> when we come back, we'll profile the 1989 champion, Kenny Skywalker, the slam dunk's most emotional victory.
our weekend 2001 back here at the MCI Center, and uh, well, I'm glad to have another guy on here who can't. It's getting count. better. Yeah. <laughs> Two legends. Now we got the boss of reason from Santa T. Uh oh. And that would be Jim Huber. Jim, take it away. Thank you, guys. When did you first learn that man could fly? Who taught you such a lesson? Was it the Wright brothers or John Glenn or a man in satin shorts with a basketball in one hand and helium in his sneakers? Was his name Connie Hawkins or Dr. J? Or was he simply on the end of one of Curly Neal's great assists? Did you see him rise as if propelled by Mercury's rings and float? Hubie Brown, who coached against him, was once asked what made Julius Irving so special. Well, said Hubie in an accent I wouldn't dare imitate, he can jump straight up. Now, a lot of guys can do that, okay? But the doctor, he jumps straight up, and then he can move sideways in midair. Few guys can do that. But Doc goes straight up, moves sideways once, and then again. Nobody does that. Chances are Doc or Michael or the Hawk wouldn't have done so well jumping off the garage roof. It's the other direction in which they specialize. Up spits directly in the face of gravity and says, you have no hold on me. They have turned elevation in all of its forms into an art over the years, one rewarded not merely on this particular day, but on every single NBA highlight show across the nation every night of the season. That man can fly should be enough, but it, that he can fly this way and that all before ever returning to Earth is the miracle. Some say the slam dunk, which is the end result of the flight most times, has changed this game of basketball forever. It is why the colleges once banned it, and ultimately why they brought it back, why the slam dunk contest was abandoned and then finally returned last year. If the game has a signature, it is men rising above their planet, soaring majestically, creating on their way. It is what we celebrate here tonight, and ultimately what will be celebrated tomorrow night. When did you first learn that man could fly? Well said. Thank you very much. Thanks, guys. Jim Huber, thanks for joining us here in the uh, NBA.com Slam Dunk presented by Real Comes Your Way later tonight. Two ball is going to be starting in just a few minutes. Now, Kenny Skywalker was never an NBA All-Star, but during one All-Star weekend, he was on top of the NBA world. The mood uh, was somber for Walker in 1989. He was dealing with the death of his father just three days before the Slam Dunk Contest. I wouldn't be surprised if Kenny was dedicating this competition to, to his dad, who uh, just passed away. I mean, that would probably be the type of thing that he would do. He's that type of an individual, and he's certainly responded here. He was playing our final game in Atlanta uh, right before uh, the All-Star break against the Hawks. And uh, my father had uh, suffered several strokes uh, prior, prior to my trip uh, to Atlanta and uh, was, was very ill. Right before uh, we were supposed to get on the bus to go down uh, over to play the Hawks, uh, my brother uh, you know, told me right before the uh, game that he had just got a phone call from home that my father had passed away. With his father's passing weighing on Walker's mind, an All-Star Saturday only three days away, Kenny's mom, Ola May, told her youngest son that she still expected him to be there for the NBA Slam Dunk Contest. It was very uh, emotional, very difficult uh, to, to compete in that contest, but I think going in, I, I had a little bit more will to win. I had a little bit more focus uh, than everybody else because of my situation. Walker would win the dunk contest in a rout, completing three near-perfect slams in the final round, while the runner-up, Clyde Rexler, failed on each of his attempts. I think that that was my father looking down from heaven, you know, blocking those dunks out of there so I could reserve the win in the NBA slam dunk contest. The win in the slam dunk would represent the highlight of Walker's professional career. In the spring of 91, Kenny Sky Walker became a free agent. Realizing he could make more money playing overseas, the 27-year-old signed with a team in Spain, where he won that league's slam dunk title. <laughs> Unfortunately, Walker would tear his right Achilles tendon, ending his stay in Spain. Following a brief stint with the Washington Bullets in the mid-90s, Walker finished his career by playing a season in Japan, where he won yet another slam dunk contest. It marked his third title in three different leagues, spanning three separate continents. 
that was a little bit easier to win over there as opposed to Europe and the NBA. But I could be the only guy to ever win uh, the slam dunk contest in three different countries. The 1989 slam dunk championship. Oh, yes. Well, that's, a, that's impressive. Something probably a young Vince Carter saw and say, uh, that guy's going to inspire me to do something crazy one day. Hopefully I did. Although he no longer plays professional sports, Walker is still involved with athletics, working for Collegiate Sports History, a company which documents the accomplishments of several southern colleges, most notably his University of Kentucky. It's a very exciting program because uh, we have an opportunity to go into the schools, to speak to the kids about staying in school, staying away from drugs, having a good positive attitude. <laughs> Although his career might not have been as productive as he and others would have liked, Walker has no regrets. I played 12 years of professional ball and played seven years in the NBA. And, uh, you know, for me, you know, having played there and having played against some really, really great ball players, I feel honored and blessed to be able to play, have said that, that I played in the NBA that long. Uh, but I do think that the NBA slam dunk contest is the thing that people are going to remember me most by. And, and, and like I said, that's not a bad thing. On one night in 1989, he was the story of All-Star Weekend, Kenny Skywalker. America Online 2-Ball. Moments away here on TNT, the first of the three night events here at the MCI Center. We'll be back. Washington, D.C., America Online 2-Ball, moments away. The warm-up's continuing here at the MCI Center. You know, we've seen, uh, we expect to see, of course, another night just jam-packed with highlights, but through the years, there have been some, uh, well, man, low lights isn't the word, but embarrassing. Bloopers. Moments. Bloopers would be yeah, appropriate. Yeah, this is some mishaps. Spin it, boys. Hey, I've seen this somewhere before. This is a very difficult dunk, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Another night full of that still to come hey, tonight I hope, on. I hope he was the worst.